Hello everyone, it's Wilson here, long time no see. I haven't been posting videos for some time and due to family responsibility, uh, it's been really busy for me, but now I think I should start posting again. Okay, so now today let's talk about evaluating a triple integral of XYZ and then you can see that the solid is the tetrahedron with vertices with those vertices here. Okay, so first thing, we are going to do the sketch and then now that looks like this. And then you can see that the tetrahedron is this solid over here with the vertex at the origin also and then now we, I label those points. The first thing that we need to do to set up the triple integral is to find the plane equation that will pass through those three points that we see here. And so um, those three points are the 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0 and then the 0, 0, 1 not including the origin because the origin is on the at the back. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that we are going to uh, first label those three points. So we have A, B, C, as you can see. And then now what happens is that we need to use those three points to form two vectors. So one of them is A, B. We can have, uh, we use A as a starting point, B is the terminal point, and then we subtract the coordinates and then we can get V1 and then that's the vector A, B. And then we do the same. Uh, let's use A as the starting point again. And this time we are going to do AC. Okay, so we get AC here. And then after that, we get the two vectors. Um, why do we get the two vectors? Because we want to get the normal for the plane. And that's required for writing down the plane equation. So that's, that's why we need the two vectors first so that we can cross them. And now we are going to cross the two vectors okay to get the normal vector so v1 cross v2 or v2 cross v1 it doesn't matter usually when i write down the two vectors i'll line them up this way so that it, it you can already pretend that it's the it has the ijk on there but if you want you can always just write down the three by three determinant this way but you can see that you don't have to write it down because i already lined them up like like the second row and then the third row for the three by three determinant okay so now we do the cross product and then we are getting this 2, 1, 2. Now we're getting doing the cross product, we're getting computing the 3 by 3 determinant. This is really just to, just to quickly review with you. We cross out the first row, first column, and then we get the 2 by 2 determinant, okay? And then we put that here for the x. And then now for the y, then we are going to cross out the first row again, and then the second column, and then we put down whatever entries that are left, and then that will be our 2 by 2 determinant. Same thing for the last one. Uh, just don't forget that there is an extra negative sign for the middle component over here. And then if you do all that calculation for the two by two determinants, then we get the values. How do we do that? It's the main diagonal entries minus the other diagonal entries multiplied together. Okay, so two times one and then minus zero times zero. So that's how we get the two. Same thing for the other two. Okay, so that's our normal vector. Then we just put it over here, okay? And then now we have the normal vector. And then the next thing is to write down the general form of the equation for the plane. And so that looks like this, okay? Where A lowercase a, b, c are the coordinates of the normal vector. So those are the two, one, and two for the lowercase a, b, c. Okay, and then now we can put down the equation. And then you may say, what about x naught, y naught, and z naught? It's one of those points that lies in the plane. So we can choose either this point, this point, or that point. We just cannot choose the origin because that's not on the plane. Okay, so I just choose the first one. So we have one, zero, zero. And then now we have the plane equation. And of course, we gotta simplify it, right? So after we simplify it, then we will get it into this form. And actually, we still got to do a little bit more work to this equation later on, but that's later. Okay, so now we write on the equation in the simplified form. And then 2x plus y plus 2z is equal to 2. Okay, so... Okay, now we are going to start setting up the triple integral. Okay, so when we put down the iterated integrals over here, then you can see that I'm going to leave the limits blank because we are going to fill them in later, okay? The integrand, the integrand is going to stay the same. So as you can see that we just copy the integrand here. And then when we put down the dv, I'm, instead of putting down just the dv, I'm putting down dz, dy, dx. Uh, you may say, can we do it in another order for the uh, integration? The answer is yes, but 
Uh, it's just that here for this problem, I'm choosing to do it uh, with the projection on the xy plane. And then you may say, what's the reason? Because it's uh, it feels more natural to do it this way for this particular problem. Uh, depending on the situation, sometimes you got to do the projection on some other uh, on the other corner plane. So it depends. Okay, so here I don't have a specific reason to do it on another corner plane, so I'm just going to do the projection on the xy plane. Okay, so now what really happens is that we are going to fill in the limits for the innermost integral first. And to do that, we actually need to look at the three dimensional solid. And to look at the solid, you can pretend that it's a building. So the triangular plane that we got earlier is our roof. And then the ground is the, uh, the xy plane. So now you can draw a sideways diagram or sideways view for the solid here. And then uh, the easy way usually to do is to pretend that you're standing on the positive x-axis and look into the yz plane direction. And when you do that, then it's going to look like this. Okay. And then what really happened is that we can draw a stick figure. Okay. So you can see that the stick figure is standing on the ground and then raising the, his, uh, their hands and touching the, uh, the roof or the ceiling over here. Okay. And then now what really happened is that we can say, okay, so the, the lower bound is where the stick figure is standing on the ground. And then we get z equals zero. Okay. And then what about the ceiling that they're touching. It's our plane. And so we it, we cannot just put down the plane equation into the upper limit here, not as easy as just putting down the zero over there. This one, we actually need to isolate the z because that's the limit for the z. So we get one minus x minus one half y. And then we got to put that there if we isolate the z. So see that that's quite easy because if you just draw the stick figure, you can actually see, okay, so standing on whatever lower limit and then touching at the, the ceiling or the roof, that's whatever, uh, whatever that is, it's our um, upper limit. Okay, now what about the outer two integrals? For the outer two integrals, we don't need to look at the three-dimensional solid anymore. We only need to look at the projection. Okay, so for the <clears throat> outer two integrals, we do not really need to look at that um, three-dimensional solid. We only need to look at the projection. So when we do that, we need to draw the projection. When we say the projection, we are talking about the bottom right triangle over here. And you can see that that's the bottom right triangle over here. So now what really happens, okay, is that we are going to just label the diagram. So the lower limit, because we're going to do y first. So we are going to go from bottom to top. So y is equal to zero. Okay. And then what about the top? The top is actually this line segment over here. And that line segment is this line segment over here. This line segment is actually the intersection between this plane here and then the xy plane. And so that means the z must be zero in order for us to get the line segment. And if we put in the zero over here, then we get two X plus Y plus zero equals two. And so in this case, we can isolate the Y. So we get Y equals two minus two X. And so now that's our upper bound. And it, here you can draw a stick figure. Or you can draw an arrow like this one. So uh, in this video, I'm presenting two different ways to show it. It's up to you. Uh, I find the three dimensional one drawing a stick figure, it's, uh, it's better. But if it's two dimensional, then I think just drawing the arrow would work well enough. Okay. So, uh, you can see that our starting point is actually on the bottom line here. If, uh, what about our, um, uh, upper limit? That's the ending point. And so the arrow goes from start, from the starting point to the ending point, as you can see. So now what about, uh, the bottom, the bottom is y equals zero. So we can put down the zero here. Upper limit, two minus two x. So see that that's what the arrow is showing. Um, just one thing to be really careful about when writing down the limits is that you can see that for uh, the top, for the top, don't put down the two, like how we put down the zero and one for the x. It's because when we draw arrow at a different spot, the value is not two. And as you can see here, this point is not actually not reaching the two. So see that the, the difference is that for the outer integral, 
outermost integral. We put down the constants because we already take care of this line segment with the in uh, the middle integral. So that's why we're able to just put down a constant over here. But for the inner integral, we actually need to consider all those points on this line segment here as the upper limit so that we have to put a, a variable function over here. Okay, so now after all doing all this work, we have this set up and then this problem is far from being finished because the calculation can be quite tedious. Even the integration does not require any special technique over here. You just do integrate, uh, just do integration with the power rule, but then uh, it's tedious. And just to save time, I'm not going to uh, show the calculation here. You can actually try it and then uh, check if your answer is correct. Okay, so after you do all that work, the answer will be 1 over 180. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to release more Cal3 videos really soon. Thank you. I'll see you next time.